All right, so today we are going to learn a couple different watercolor landscapes. I'm mm, do probably four, around four. So it might be a little bit of a longer video. Feel free to pause it if you want to. So for supplies, I've got my watercolors, paper. I've got two different size brushes. Um, I've got a pencil. I've got over to the side, I have paper towel. I have water, of course, and then I have a little bit of salt for some effect that um, we are going to do today. So on my sketchbook, I'm gonna turn it horizontally and I am going to do just four boxes and they do not have to be the same size, but um, because we're just practicing. All right, in this first one, we're gonna do a little bit of like an open field. The second one, we'll do more of an ocean type thing. This one, we're gonna do um, like a night sky sort of looking up, and this one, we're gonna do a mountains. For these three, you don't really need to draw anything on there, but for this one, we are going to. We're gonna draw our mountains on here. So I'm just drawing some mountains off to the side here. Um, and remember mountains don't have to be perfect. They should be not triangles. So that's the, f the first thing we need to know is no triangles. Um, and then, you know, I'm just going to sort of have like that go off there. So the rest of these, we don't really need anything for. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do, um, a like field over here. So I'm going to get my brush wet. I'm gonna get part of my paper wet. I'm gonna go down probably like three quarters of the way down with wet right now, because that's gonna be my, sort of my sky area. Uh-oh, something was on my water glass. Um, and then I'm gonna come in here with a blue. And come in here. All right, let it travel down move my chair there we go I'm coming in with a little bit more water because I want it to be lighter as I go down so if I use water on my blue um, it'll help to make that blue get a little bit lighter as I come down all right coming in here making sure my edges are nice all right I'm going to come in and add a little bit of a darker blue on top here so if you don't have another blue, you can just add more of the one color that you had and that will help. Oop. So that was a little much. So I wiped my brush off and coming in to sort of soak it up a little bit. Remember thirsty brush is like one of my favorites. And then what I'm gonna come in and do, and I'm going to put some water, like big things of water in here and with that, we are hoping that it gets lighter. See that? And this is going to be creating some clouds for us. So if you don't have dark enough like blue on your paper, then it's not gonna show up so much. You can also come in here with like a thirsty brush and really soak up some of this other blue in here. But adding this water in here helps to make those clouds. And I probably could have gone a little bit um, darker with my blue, but that's okay. So I've got some fluffy cloud action happening here. Um, I might come in here. Ooh, that's really bright. So come in here and sort of blend some blue up. Get a little bit of water in here. So I can blend up a little bit, because I want to. And then I'm gonna come in with a thirsty brush and suck some of that up a little. And then I'm coming in, because I wanted like a, a couple different cloud formations down here. Watercolor is cool because a lot of times you can fix it, other times you can't, and sometimes you just sort of have to go along with it. So I'm going to sort of let this dry and we're going to move on to um, a sunset ocean type thing. And again, I'm going to come in here 
and get water and come down probably three quarters of the way. And the reason I'm gonna let this dry is because I wanna do um, a color right here and if everything's wet, it's just gonna blend together. So don't wanna do that. I'm gonna start off with like a darker blue up on the top here. Ooh, look at that, that's beautiful. See how it blended all the way down for me? It's doing the work for me here. I wanna come in with maybe a little bit of purple even and add it in some places. Not a ton of places. And then I'm gonna come in with um, a nice orange color here. little bit of yellow. I'm gonna make a like sun area here and a little bit of yellow going out to the side around it. And I'm gonna use a little bit of, of uh, some red too. So I'm getting to the bottom of where my water, like I stopped my water, so it's not blending as much and that's okay. We'll just put a little bit more water on and help it blend. We also don't want this yellow to be like super in your face. So we might come back in and put it on top of some other areas here. I'm gonna come in and blend these a little bit now that they sort of stopped moving. Maybe add a little bit more blue in here. A little bit more orange to make it more vibrant. And a lot of this comes down to like your what you like, you know, if you like really dull colors, if you like more vibrant colors. I am a color lady, so I love colors. So just bringing the red down just a little bit more. And then we're gonna come in and sort of make some cloud formations with this too. So get some water on that brush, let it sort of spread around and depending on how your paper sort of is bubbling a little bit especially since we're not really using watercolor paper right now it might all go to one area so you may have to come in when it's a little bit more dry and just darken up some areas which that's okay there's a big puddle here so I'm gonna just suck up some of that I can come in with my thirsty brush and suck up some of these other areas to make. So I'm not liking how like all the color is sort of left because of the water I added on. So I'm just bringing some darker areas in here. You can always come back in and make it look more like how you want. I want this to be more of a vibrant sunset. So I'm definitely coming back in and adding some more of this here. Wash my brush off so I can sort of blend it in with the yellow a little bit. Bring it up into here. Sort of keeping that sun shape. And I know a lot of that yellow disappeared. We can always come back in. I remember when you're doing watercolor, you don't need a ton of it. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit of blue in here to get some, there, that looks good. A little bit of yellow on my brush. Ooh, my brush is not clean. So because I had a little bit of blue on my brush, it spread, so I'm taking a clean brush and sort of wiping it off a little bit, see? Because it's still, my paper is still wet, I can do that once it's dry. That's not happening anymore. So there we go, I like that, I like that. This looks like it's dry enough, so we're gonna go back to that one. And I'm gonna take a green or a darker, sort of greenish color here. I might mix it with a little bit of blue. Um, and we're gonna create sort of like a grassy hill area. 
and I'm going over the blue, which is okay. I'm actually gonna come in with my darker blue and add it on top to make it a little bit darker here. I don't like to use a lot of black. I like to use natural colors. Come back in with this green. Oh, maybe it wasn't dry enough. You see it's spreading. That's okay, we can come in and clean those edges up a little bit, make my hills a little bit taller, which is not a big deal. So spreading a little bit, which is okay to a certain extent, but then not okay as well, right? Because we want, and I'm taking in coming in with a little bit of brown because we want it to be, we want our image to have this like distinctiveness to it. That's why we were waiting for it to dry. So lesson learned, right? But I do want this to get darker. Oh man, more I put on here, the more it goes back. So maybe I'll just keep my color on the bottom right now and I can always come back in and make it a little bit. So we're gonna leave it like that because it keeps spreading, but it doesn't look bad. All right, so lesson learned from this one. We're gonna, we're gonna not touch this then. We're not gonna do anything for this one right now, but we are gonna do this one. So coming in here and adding some water. Again, we can go pretty far down on this one. And then I'm gonna come in with my darker blue and sort of come to my edges here. Sort of frame it out because we're doing, the, this one's the like night sky sort of looking up. So we wanna frame it out, this is sort of galaxy-ish. Come in here with a lighter blue and come again next to it and hope that they just sort of blend together, which is like the best part about this, is that they are just gonna, these colors, if you have enough water on your paper, are just gonna start to blend and mesh together themselves, which that, makes it look really awesome. And then I'm gonna come in here with um, like a purpley, pinky color on the bottom. Sort of have this come up. And I can bring some of this purple into the edges here. And I'm leaving the inside here really, really light because we want it to look a little galaxy-ish. So if we have that light area, it'll get that effect for us. So I'm coming in with a little bit of purple to put on top of this blue here. Sort of blend them together a little bit better. Remember to always get them, come back and get some water, oops. Suck that up. We do want a little bit more purple, darker purple down here. So don't forget your water. Don't forget to add your water on your brush to help blend things, to help move colors. Um, and then this one is where we're gonna add some salt. So I'm coming in and sprinkling some salt around. You don't need a lot, just a pinch. But if you don't have water on your paper, it's not gonna work. If you don't have pigment on your paper, it's not gonna work. So you have to make sure that, I know I have some, like a big pile in the lighter area, we'll take that off, but you want your salt to have something to soak up. So sometimes you may have to come in and like put some water around in some areas so that there's something to soak up because you want it to have that really cool texturized effect. If it doesn't have anything to soak up, pigment or water, then it's not gonna work. Oh, there we go. Um, let's do this one before we go back to that one. So this one's gonna be easy. We're gonna do red to orange to yellow down to the mountain range. So again, I'm gonna put color on my, I mean, not color, water on my paper. And if I outline where the mountains are, then my, realistically, if I'm doing this correctly, then my paint should stay where that water is. So 
This one you're taking a little bit more time to prep to make sure that you're not getting water anywhere. I mean color anywhere. So add in a little bit more. So I'm gonna come in with my red. That's like a pinky red, that's okay, it's cool. And again, depending on how vibrant you want it, depends on how much color you put on. And then I'm gonna come in here with some yellow. My yellow's dirty, I gotta clean it off. If you ever have a color that's dirty, you just take clean water and sort of brush it off. Um, and then it'll start to get clean. You can do that with a brush or a paper towel even. So just sort of wash my brush off, bring that yellow down a little bit. All right, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sort of come across here and start blending them up and down with each other. Oop, gotta watch out for your mountain range. Got a little bit on there, but that's okay. So once you do that, like background is done. So we gotta wait for that. We are, that's pretty dry. So we're gonna come back up here and do a little bit of, oh, my brush isn't clean. Do some yellow in here because we want it to look like a field. So you can see I did not put water on my paper beforehand and that's okay to do. It's called the wet on dry method because sometimes you need that. And then you're gonna come in with an orange e-color and sort of just do a little bit of texture here. And it's really, really bold right now, but I'm gonna come back in with just water on my brush sort of lighten it up. I can even come in and suck up some of it if I don't want it there. Um, bring it around. I'm also gonna use a little bit of brown. So I'm sort of dirtying up, I guess, the yellow to make this look a little bit more realistic. And then I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna let that sit because I wanna come in and make that darker, but I don't want them to blend. So I'm gonna leave it like that. I'm gonna come to this one here and this one is gonna be like a super dark. So, my black got a little dirty, so I'm just cleaning that off. I'm gonna take my black. Now, I don't need to have it black, black. Add a little bit more water on my brush. So more like a gray. So the more water on your brush, the more gray you're gonna have. I want my corner or my edges to be a little bit I'm coming in here and like sort of making the top edge a little bit more wavy because we this is going to be our our C remember so it's not perfectly straight it's never perfectly straight really so come in here and get a little bit more black and then what I'm going to do is come in here with a blue and go on top of it to get that ocean But it's at sunset, so things are a little bit darker, and that's why we have that. I really like this side here, so I'm gonna bring a black and I need to get some water on my brush. Here I am telling you to get water, and I'm forgetting. But I think it's also good to come in then with a dry brush and come in and sort of make some, like suck up some, and the ocean is always horizontal, so making some areas of really light where the light 
is potentially hitting it. And you may have to come in a couple times because your paper is wrinkly, but coming in and adding some of those lighter areas in there. And this side doesn't want to stay light over here, but that's okay. I think I'm actually going to come in make it a little bit darker over here. So always stay horizontal when you're doing the ocean because the sea doesn't go up and down, always goes back and forth. Washing my brush off. I'm gonna come in here with a little bit of yellow and make the sun a little bit more vibrant, just on the top. I'm not making it a big circle I'm also going to come in, maybe add a little bit more orange in here. I really like the vibrant areas, so I might come in and darken everything. Now that things are a little bit drier, come in here with my red. Just be careful when you get to the top edge of the sea that it's not so... You're not mixing that, but since we did wet on dry instead of wet on wet, it shouldn't be too bad. So coming in here with a little bit of water on my brush to help blend these colors out. Maybe a little bit more yellow peeking through. I can also come in and bring some of this orange up here with some blue. Make the blue a little bit darker. I'm trying to stay around my cloud areas, but it's nice to sort of bring it in there a little bit. Sort of defining, I'm coming in and defining the clouds a little bit more, although I didn't want that blue to all the, go to, all the way down there, which is okay. Sucked it up with a brush. Get a little purple. There, ooh, I'm starting to really like how this is turning out. And sometimes it takes a little bit, but I like those cloud formations. I would love to have a little bit more, but maybe add a little bit of blue down here to make it look like it's sunset instead of. So I would totally love to have like some clouds on here. So I'm gonna try, I'm gonna attempt. I'm taking a clean brush. I'm gonna come in here. I don't think it's gonna work because it would dry it already. Yeah, it's not gonna work. So sometimes you can take a clean brush and get some of that paint away and it'll create a lighter area, but we don't have that, which is okay. I'm actually gonna take um, my smaller brush here and I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna do, um, well, actually we have to wait till it's dry. Never mind. sorry. Sorry guys, wait till it's dry. You know, you could even come in and add some darker blue areas in here if you wanted to. Give it a little bit more texture on here. You know, if you don't like that look, that's okay too, don't do it. But I just, I'm coming in with a, just water on my brush now and sort of blending them out so they're not super noticeable and that helps even. So this one's almost done, we have one more thing to do. All right, we're gonna come back to this guy here. This is looking cool. Um, so we're gonna come back to this one and I want this to be darker. So I do think, I didn't wanna add black, but I do think I'm gonna add black on it. Um, Cause I want that to be a darker area here. So I've got a little bit of black and green on my brush. I'm sort of mixing them in my palette here. That looks better. There we go. 
And now I'm gonna take my littler brush. I have a little bit of a, a round brush. So whatever your watercolors came with, that brush, not the brush that I gave you, use that. And we're gonna make a little tree here. So I'm gonna use the side of my brush to make a nice little um, trunk like that. Ooh, I have too much water on my brush, which is okay for that area. But with when we make the tree, we don't want a ton of water on the brush because we want our watercolor to stay. We don't want it to move anywhere. And then you're just gonna take it and sort of make like a tree shape like this. And we don't want it to be perfect. We want it to have like crazy edges as well. And that's my tree. That's what I'm gonna do. I am looking at this though, and I sort of think I want a little bit more texture and stuff down here. So I'm bringing, I'm getting my brown back again. So just like with the ocean coming in here, adding a little bit of texture, maybe add a little bit of yellow in here as well. And then I'm going to clean my brush, come in here with a brush that has water on it, sort of go back and forth. And I know I'm getting rid of some of that texture, but some of it will stay. And I'll just give it a little bit more of a natural look on there. There, that looks better. This one's done then. That one's done, easy, easy peasy. Um, all right, let's do this mountain range on here. So we're gonna use black. And remember, the more water you have, then the less black it's gonna be. So I'm gonna come in here with a little bit of black on my brush and um, a lot of water on my brush. So I need to take this and move it around so that this black, there we go, see? I don't want it to stay in one space. You can bring that all the way down here. So I do have quite a bit of water on my brush, just so that you guys are aware. And that is why I'm able to move this around. And then, you know, mountains aren't just gray, so you can come in here and add a little bit of blue on your mountain in some areas. You can even come in here, add a little bit of a like purpley gray color. And that's a little too purpley, but. Um, woo. Here we go, that looks, a little, that looks better. So sometimes if you put too much color down, just clean your brush off and come in and suck it up. So I wanna define my mountain range a little bit. So I wanna come in here and take off some of this color. And I probably should have left it. Been a little bit better with my watercolor, but that's okay. Even just doing this helps So I'm just taking in, coming in here with a brush and sort of soaking up some areas to make this look a little bit more realistic, a little bit more 3D, but I do want this part to be a little bit darker here. So you sort of have to learn how to go back and forth between different things. Um, you know, if you, put a, if you put a dark color next to where you just sort of tried to suck things up, it'll make it look a little bit more lighter, which is nice. It's getting a little too light there, so I'm gonna kind of come in and, again, it's too dark, but we come in with a brush. This needs to be a little bit darker here. Ooh, I just I drop one everywhere. So I'm gonna see if I can come in here and make this. There we go. See? Suck up some of this that went here. 
just sort of making some areas of light on our mountain range. get a little bit darker on the bottom here. Taking some of that off a little too dark. So just come in here with the brush. I do like how this blues and the purples are sort of mixing in with the grays. didn't mix as well over here. There. Here we go. Sort of blending a little bit more, bringing some of that black up into that blue there. My whites, because I keep messing with it, aren't staying as well. You can try to put white color, white um, watercolor down, but typically it doesn't work how we want it to. It's not like white paint, it's just a little different. So you have to be careful with that. All right, we're gonna let that dry. We're gonna come back to this guy and we are gonna get some black on our paint brush. We're gonna start making some uh, pine trees. And when we do this, they're a little bit at an angle. So they're sort of facing towards the middle. And they all don't need to be the same height or evenly spaced even. And then from here, you just sort of come in here like we did with that tree. And I'm just sort of dabbing the paper. You wanna have some light coming through, just a touch, because you do have that in real life. Got a little bit more black on my brush, so. It'll all, and they're not all the same shape. Sometimes they have parts that come out, parts that stay in, and they're gonna touch. Which is okay. We don't want it to be perfect by any means. So we got one tree left here. And then we're gonna fix this bottom area. So we're gonna come in with blackest of black and this is all gonna be black, 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 black. And this is gonna give the illusion that we're looking up. So I'm covering up all of the white down here. We don't want that. And then you can come in and sort of start to fix, maybe make things a little bit taller if you wanted to and start to fix things like that. And you may have to come in in a little bit and darken it up because we all know that it lightens as we go. But this one is is done. And look at how cool that that salt effect was. So we got two done. Um, since we're using our a littler brush, come over and let's do this one. So we're just gonna add like a little bit of um, some birds here in the background. 
So you're gonna come in, I'm actually gonna turn my paper sideways because um, it'll be easier for me to sort of hold my, hold my brush. And I'm going to come in and do really, really lightly Do some like V style birds. And as they get farther away from you, they're gonna get smaller. All right, so make sure you have that. I like the number three. Um, I either do like three or five, I do odd numbers. So if you don't like that, or if you want some over here, then you can do a couple of those over there as well. All right, so let's get back to our mountain range. Um, I'm actually going to come in now that it's a little bit um, dry. I'm going to come in and make some of these areas a little bit darker here, um, just like we did in some of our other things. So I'm mixing a little bit of blue and black in my palette, having some um, water on my brush. And I'm going to sort of like make this like ridge here because I want these two to be separated and I'm gonna make a little bit of a darker ridge here because again, I want these to be separated here. And then I'm gonna come out and sort of take that color and blend it out. Again, washing my brush a little bit more so it blends out a little bit better. Um, making sure I keep this whiter. I want this like whiter area here. I'm gonna come in with a little bit of the same color. Whoop, this has a little bit more blue, which I like. So I'm gonna come in here and add it a little bit to whatever I just did here. I'm gonna make this mountain a little bit darker here and we want it a little bit darker than the other one because it's farther away from the light source if the light source is behind the mountains then um it's going to be a little bit darker towards us and maybe come in here and make like a little bit of a you know another little darker sort of hill mountain in this area here come with a little bit of black to make it really a little too black, so coming in and lightening it up. Um, coming in with a little bit of purple, adding a little bit of purple to these areas here. Add a little bit down there. You, know, you just have to be careful that you're not completely, um, like, I don't know, not completely, um, touching other colors. Like I wanted to make that a little bit darker, but I had to make sure I stayed away from that area I added. Making things a little bit lighter here. Maybe there's a lighter chunk on here. Doesn't always have to be dark. lightening this up a little bit. Okay, so then um, we have to let this dry. So while we let this dry, if we wanna talk about creating frames around our pieces um, so that they just sort of look finished, and this um, is really a nice thing to do. So taking your brush, and I'm um, gonna actually turn my paper upside down because I wanna work with these and I don't wanna put my hand on that. So turning it upside down and what I can do, and I know I went outside the lines a little bit, so this will help with that but you can, and I'm gonna hold my paper down because it's a little, I can actually take some of this salt off. You don't have to take the salt off, but you can. And come around here on the edge and just, and again, this isn't probably gonna be super straight, but setting a frame. I went out a little bit farther than I wanted to. So I guess my, my edge on this one's gonna be a little bit thicker, which isn't bad. So coming back up here, so I'm creating these corners here and I can go on top of my, uh, on top of my painting a little bit. I probably should have done that on the other side. I'm gonna come in and fill that in with uh, 
some blue here when I'm done. I'm gonna start on this side here. It's nice that this is black down on the bottom here. So I don't have to be super perfect with my lines. So just bringing some of that black up since I darkened it a little bit. So just coming in and adding these frames really just helps make it look a little bit more professional. And obviously you wanna do this when things are dry. If you do it when things are wet, then you're gonna run into some problems. It's good to practice this for a couple reasons. One, to practice sort of like finishing touches, but also to practice like those nice straight lines. I will say, um, I like a flat brush for this because the flat brush can get pretty skinny. Um, but also when I am doing this, I am moving, ooh, there's a ridge there. So it got a little, that's why I was holding him a little flat. I'm moving my whole arm when I do this. I'm not just moving my, my wrist or my hand. My whole arm is helping me create these boxes around it. That also really helps to make some nice straight lines is making sure you're using your full body and not just using your hand to do this. So see how it just sort of cleans up your edges, makes them super nice. So I'm gonna wash my brush really good since I just use a bunch of black and I'm coming here with a little bit of blue and clean up. Just put it in there a little bit. Again, if it looks like it's not blending, just come in here with a little bit of water on your brush and just blend it out and you're good to go. You have to be careful though, because your black is, uh, there's this little corner here, your black is wet because it hasn't dried. So you just have to be aware of that. Like down here, it sort of doesn't matter. It helps it out actually, but just coming in there and like fixing those edges. All right, so I'm gonna get my little brush back and we're gonna add some more tr mountain, tr like not mountain trees, pff, evergreens, cause evergreens go anywhere, right? They're not just on mountains and this is wet. So I'm gonna do this. It, it will probably bleed like it did up here. Um, if you want to um, let it dry, then do that. I'm just sort of getting it done for video purposes. So come in here and just like I did with this one, sort of make my lines of where my trees are gonna be. So I can already see that it's bleeding a little bit, which isn't too bad with pine trees um, because we have to bring them out anyway. And you can put in as many as or as little as you want, but this sort of helps clean up, sort of like we did here, clean up the bottom a little bit. And it helps to frame the picture too. So coming in here and, you know, coming back in here and 
dabbing it. To make those evergreens. I like to have a lot of paint on my brush. And less water to get um, the really heavy look and then the paint doesn't spread as much if I have it like that. And remember, these are like, like these are tiny little drawings, little paintings. So sometimes like things are gonna be, like look far away, right? They're gonna be very, very tiny. So we're not trying to make them like really big and crazy. We want things to look, I need a little bit more water. It's okay to have more like evergreen parts on one side compared to the other side because they're not perfect and they're part of nature. So they're organic. All right, and then just like with this one, which I'm looking over here and because I added that dark black, I have to, I'm gonna come in and add a little bit of another layer here. Of the black because I added this down here and you can tell um, there's a separation between the two so just coming in here and really making sure it all sort of blends it's like that dark blends together not a gray got some salt on here from when I wiped it off so we're gonna come and sort of do the same thing down here with this guy sort of do a nice line And then just like with this, sort of build up that black into this. So it's not just a straight line anymore and it's sort of creating our tree line effect here. And then I'm just gonna keep the same brush and come in here and I feel like I'm running out of paint, like out of, I'm gonna come from the bottom. Might be easier. If you are struggling to make these edges, try it from different angles. Do you need to turn your paper? Um, do you need to come up from the bottom? You know, what works best for you? Because what works best for you may not be what works best for me, which is okay. I'm gonna get a little bit more water. Here we go. So now we are done. We've got four completely different landscapes. Um, and I would say I like these trees better than those trees, but that's why we practice and that's why we learn. So I would definitely do these trees probably in here, make them a little bit skinnier, you know, and do that. Um, but there we have it. We have our landscapes.